What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'd like to talk about how personally I feel that Modern Warfare and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War have kind of proven, I think to a lot of people, that Call of Duty does not need to be a game year in and year out. I've always felt this way. I've always felt like having a new COD title every year is kind of goofy. I've never really liked the idea. Do I think it will ever change? No. Unless Activision absolutely sees a money-making opportunity or a money uh, or money decreasing from having a game year in year out, I don't think they will ever change it. But personally, I've always felt that every year it's kind of odd. Uh, from a public match, pub match standpoint, from a pro league standpoint, I just always think a, a new game every. Let's be honest, um, less than twelve months, really. I mean. I guess it is technically 12 months, but some years, you know, we have games come out in November. Some years they'll come out in September, October. So sometimes it might be, you know, 11 months or whatever the case may be. But overall, I, I just feel like a lot of people are starting to kind of think the same in some ways from things I've been reading online, tweets, uh, Reddit, whatever the case may be. And it's just a lot to do with the issues with the games once they are released. Now, the number one thing a lot of people talk about is skill-based matchmaking. They say that's turning a lot of people away from the game. And I think you all know how I feel about skill-based matchmaking. I've said it several times in, in other videos. I've kind of learned to deal with it. It is what it is. I think that's kind of the era of Call of Duty we're in. Um, it's not into those pub stomping matches like we used to have back in the day. While skill-based matchmaking has always been around, no matter what anybody tells you, that's always been a thing in Call of Duty. It's just turned up to 10 now compared to what it used to be. Um, they really want to protect uh, players that aren't that good and then put everyone else in kind of skill-based matchmaking lobbies, which is going to make it super sweaty for most people. Um, I, I think I can agree with, you know, I, I can understand why Activision does it, but they think that it's going to protect players that aren't good. They're going to continue to play. Uh, if they were in lobbies where they were just getting slapped around 24-7, they would not continue to play. I think they think the... Super hardcore fans are going to continue to play no matter what, whether skill-based matchmaking is there or not. And a lot of people are saying that it's, it's driving people away from the game. Of course, we will kind of know this in, in years to come if skill-based matchmaking continues this trend, which I think it will uh, in every Call of Duty title. We'll kind of see then if it's driving players away or not. But, you know, I'm not really concerned with skill-based matchmaking uh, being an issue of why the game shouldn't be out year in, you know, year in and year out. Some people think that that's one thing that's kind of hurting the game year in and year out. Uh, my main issue, really, or one of them, is the bugs. There's a lot of bugs and a lot of problems and a lot of things that don't work correctly uh, when a new title is released. If you think back to Modern Warfare, you think about the release of Cold War, there's just a lot of things that are not working properly. Even though we have betas and alphas, the guns still feel like they're not right. I mean, when the game was released, the FFAR in Activision and in... And, 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 uh, Treyarch's mind was way too strong. The MP5 was way too strong. Uh, they have tweaked snipers several times since the alpha. It just feels like there's not a lot, a not, lot a, not enough testing, a lot, not a lot of testing going on as I get it out here in a second, I promise. Uh, it just feels like a lot of things not, are not looked at correctly. Uh, there's a lot of issues with the game year in and year out uh, that do not get fixed until several months into the life cycle. Sometimes there's things, and, and I can think of Modern Warfare as one of the more recent games that still has some of the same issues from day one that it had in the end. And now, I'm not, I was not a big fan of Modern Warfare, so uh, um, I know a lot of you out there love it. I thought it was awful, <laughs> personally, for 6v6. Uh, other modes were fun. I know Warzone was a blast for a lot of people. But the 6v6 experience was just not, was, was not my thing. Personally, I think Cold War 6v6 is a lot better game. But there's so many issues with Cold War from time to time that it could end up hurting the game in the long run, player base wise. Uh, and if these things were fixed, you know, within the next month or so, I, I think it could be, in a lot of people's minds, some of their top, one of their top Call of Duty games of all time. I always consider things like uh, COD 4, Modern Warfare 3, uh, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3 as some of my favorite Call of Duty games to play. And I could definitely see Cold War being up there if some of these issues were fixed. Uh, another reason that I think that we really do not need a COD from year to year even if we went to every year and a half to two years, if we didn't even go to extreme of two years, uh, every two years of games out, if we went to every year and a half, I think a lot of these things could be fixed. And one big thing, uh, and we have seen this in World War II, we saw this in Modern Warfare, and we've seen it, we're seeing it this year in Cold War, and that is content. 
when you're starting out a game with uh, you know seven, eight, nine, six v six maps, it's not really that good in a lot of people's minds. Considering we used to get a lot more maps, and I've already talked about this in videos before. I feel like we used to get more maps because we used to pay for DLC. So they probably felt like there was a certain amount of the player base that was not going to buy DLC or not buy all the DLC packs or not buy the season pass. And so they felt like they needed to have more maps for the players that were not going to buy DLC. Now everything is free. So, you know, you can't say, well, I don't have enough content because you're going to get all the maps just like everyone else is. So over the last several years, we've seen maps kind of drop off. Now, World War II was an exception. Of course, there was a season pass there with that game, and that was really what hurt that game, in my opinion, was the amount of map content. But if you just not even look at map content, look at weapons. Uh, Modern Warfare did not have that many weapons. I know a lot of people think Cold War is just lacking in weapons, but there's still some CODs that have the same amount or a little bit less than Modern, uh, Cold War even did. And when you get a game that uh, comes out year after year and you're lacking in in content when it comes to weapons and maps i think that shows that it's not something that needs to happen all the time this game does not need to come out every year if you're going to wait and put out everything within a battle pass it, it's kind of upsetting i think some players kind of disappointing to some players it makes some players want to wait months into the game's life cycle before they purchase it so they feel like they're getting their money's worth um and that kind of goes into my next point. It, it feels like uh, if you look at Modern Warfare 3, um, and you probably, I, I could probably kind of have the same feeling about Cold War, it's going to take three to six months of, you know, updates, content coming out, whatever the case may be, to make the game really feel like it's finished and polished. A lot of people still say they, they feel like they're playing the beta version of Cold War. I, a lot of people said the same thing about Modern Warfare. It felt like you were still playing the beta version of the game, just a little more polished version, a little more updated version of the beta, because you really don't have enough content for the game until, you know, that first season or second season comes out. You're getting, you know, maps and weapons and, and skins and things with the past. And that is also a, a thing that I think discourages a lot of people from purchasing the game where I was about. It. Even though Call of Duty sells well year in and year out, uh, Modern Warfare did really well because of Warzone. It's still a thing that I think a lot of Hardcore fans, a lot of dedicated fans, a lot of people that have played Call of Duty from year from year to year feel like, you know what, I, I could wait you know, a month or two to buy this. I could wait three months until it's into the you know first season or second season because that's when I know the content's going to be there. Um, I also feel like, I mean, I know that a lot of had a lot of it had to go on what's going on in the world right now with the whole uh, virus situation, and then, you know that could continue into next year. Who knows what next year's COD is going to be like if this continues for another year or so or whatever the case may be however long this goes on and has people working from home or whatever the case is. I still feel like these games are starting to blend. You can kind of tell, in my opinion, this was going to be a Sledgehammer game to begin with. I think when Treyarch kind of got thrown into this, they had to use some of the things that Sledgehammer was already doing. Of course, Sledgehammer still helped them make the game, as we know. And I feel like a lot of these maps are almost those Sledgehammer, Modern Warfare, Infinity Ward style maps. I don't feel like this game is completely a Treyarch game. And that is kind of sad. And you can kind of tell it at times, like I said, with certain maps. Because everything does not feel like a Treyarch game. Now, we know they're using a different kind of visual engine or an upgraded visual engine. Uh, engine. So the game looks more like Modern Warfare than it used to. Uh, than the game used to look like more like a Treyarch style game. It looks more like an Infinity Ward Sledgehammer style game now. That may all, always be the thing. I'm not sure. I, it's probably going to be the case with this new visual engine. But at the same time, I feel like Treyarch took a lot of things from uh, what Sledgehammer was doing and kind of implemented them into their, you know, gaming idea. And, of course, that's to be understood, like I said, with everything going on. So, you know, the next Treyarch game we get may be a little bit different. But I'm kind of curious exactly what's going to happen going forward because we know Sledgehammer's hiring for new jobs and things like that. So we're going to get back into that three different developer uh, game cycle year after year. Which is nice because, you know, if you have a favorite uh, a developer like Treyarch's your favorite, for example, I really do like Treyarch games myself, they're going to have several years to be able to make their next game. Uh, but is that really going to be the case? Are we going to get into, is going to be Infinity Ward and Treyarch every year, every other year, and just Sledgehammer kind of helping them out? Uh, personally, I wish we, like I said, kind of at the start, we'll go into a year and a half, maybe life cycle, maybe two years. I think it would be good for public matches. I think it would be good for competitive because this is really the only competitive game that you watch that the players have to 
you know, change their change the game, change the weapons, change their play styles year after year because it's a new game year after year. Um, I almost ha have, you know, considered at times wondering if I would like a just combination of all of these development teams coming together, putting a lead over them. Uh, wink, wink, David Vanderhaar would be my, my, my suggestion. And then making a game every two years. I, I don't know what the answer is, but I do feel like a lot of people are starting to think the same way I am, maybe. I, I've seen a lot of comments uh, about this, and this is the way I've felt for several years now, several titles now, that it feels like that it just does not need to be a yearly game. And like I said, at the start, I know this will never happen, but I think Modern Warfare and Cold War are starting to prove that theory a little more. Uh, you can see a lot of the issues that have come about with these two games that I feel would not be there if we had a, you know, a, a game not being released every 10 to 12 months. If we had a game that was being released every year and a half to two years, I think you would see some improvements to the issues we have year in and year out with each Call of Duty title, whether that be bugs, just problems in the game in general, uh, weapon balancing, uh, content, whatever the case is, I think we would see a lot, uh, a lot, a lot of improvement compared to yearly uh, we would see a lot of improvement, you know, from that maybe every year and a half to your style idea. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Of course, leave me a comment with your thoughts. If you like the video, make sure you hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. If you are a subscriber, make sure you click the bell icon in the top right corner so you know when all my videos go live. And be sure to check out everything down in the description of uh, the community discord, my Twitter, and of course the affiliate here on the channel, GT Racing. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.